All right, I'm a lucky guy, Blue Triton. I'm here with Ed Ferguson. Hey, Ed, how are you? Hi, Paul, thanks. Is it Chief Sustainability? Yeah, Chief Sustainability Officer over here at Blue Triton. I thought Trans. so. Okay, you guys are doing a great job. You're very, very serious about water. And uh, here are some of her, their locations. But what makes them somebody I like and honored to get a chance to speak to is they're taking, look at this, they take out recycling pledge. They're serious about water. They're not just using water, they're considering water. They have stewards on their locations. Tell us about it. Yeah, so uh, Blue Triton, and depending on where you are, we have regional brands and that's the bread and butter of our business. We're basically just US and Canada, but what we do is everything water. So the typical water you see in store, Owen Spring, we do the big five gallon jugs that you put on your water cooler, so it's a reusable platform. And then we also have filtration units. So we're really kind of oh. everything water. And our whole mission is we don't want to be anybody's singular source of water. We want to be a product of choice when people have other baseline access to water. So water access really ties into our vision of healthy hydration for everyone, everywhere, always. And that's what we're building towards. And we see us as a way to do that, as well as through our partnerships, our internal water stewards you referenced. But I'll truncate it there so I don't stay too long, talk too long. But <laughs> well, I, I talked to Michael. I'm going to attach his conversation to this conversation. I'll have you start it because uh, he got into the nitty gritty about water and about the importance uh, and his appreciation of your company uh, and the water. Uh, even, even with an example of here that even on this Poland Spring, you guys put, uh, you know, I know the history of this uh, whole Poland Spring thing. And look at you, you're talking about a white cedar spring in Maine. So you're really about the reality of where you get your water. You have no, I, I'd say in the past, there was not some, some concerning scenarios that have occurred with even this company. Um, and you guys are upfront and you are a transparent company. We can always be better. So it's a big part of our mission. Anytime anybody's touching some water, it's near and dear to everyone's heart, liveliness, your plants outside, the animals you provide water, just such an integral part of life. The higher levels of transparency is needed. And that's a big piece of what we're doing here is we have an internal team because we source our own water for about two thirds of the water we use through springs and wells. And that requires responsible management. We don't want to jump from spring to spring to spring. We want to use the same spring, like in Poland Springs case, for more than 175 years. So when you look at long-term resiliency, we have that internal team of water stewards, or what we call them, the natural resource team. They oversee day to day, they'll go in around the different springs, monitor the groundwater, levels, the quality of it, and then they'll also do metrics like biodiversity, so macro invertebrates, to understand is the ecosystem healthy there, supporting longevity of water, and is there a need for us to switch sources temporarily in moments of like, low precipitation, so it informs our whole supply chain of how we actually source the water. If anything we could potentially do to damage it, damages our own livelihood. So there's such a higher level of responsibility when you're sourcing your own water. And that's why we have that in internal team of geologists, hydrogeologists and engineers to manage the water day to day. Because it's a lot. Anybody on a well or their own pond in their backyard, they know it's a lot to manage your own water. And that's what we live day to day. You know, I, I've been a fortunate guy because I learned about water about 25 years ago. You learn about it as a Boy Scout growing up, but you don't learn, I didn't learn about it in the manner that I did. Yeah. I had a buddy, Phil Sowers, uh, at an organization called World Water Rescue Foundation, and he was a dedicated surfer, built surfboards, Phil's out of Redondo Beach, and so he was a water guy. And he got involved with Tajikistan, who created World Water Day in the United Nations, okay? And then I met Pete Seeger, who has an organization called the Clear Water, which helped clean the Hudson River, which I've been involved with. So water for me, and then nature series also. So, and our audience knows that. It's the only reason I'm saying it, okay? Because I know I'm, I'm, and we do on April, well, it's March 22nd is World Water Day. Uh, and because it's the day you can put an egg and it'll stand up on Mother Earth. But we also have, and we do these concerts in Times Square to acknowledge, and we want to inviting you to be part of it. But what do you think is, uh, is the importance now with your company of, of getting the word out and some of the things you can do? So, one of the biggest things, because we're basically just U.S. and Canada, 
that's where our operations are, that's where most of our products are sold. What's interesting is how quick people are to overlook water for how integral it is to our daily life, whether you're a surfer and you're surfing on it, or you're an athlete and you need hydration during your marathon. It's very easy to look past water. So in the US, like calling attention to some of the shared water challenges that we see is, is imperative because it's easy to look elsewhere at global problems and not realize that we have challenges here. So in, in North America, for example, one of the big things that we uncovered was a few years ago, we started working with an organization called Dig Deep. They did a study that highlighted about 2.2 million Americans don't have access to pipe water. And you don't hear about these communities that are separated from systems or don't have ways to get it. So they're either shipping it in or they're getting our products or other kind of packaged water options. It's like, that is just not talked about the way it should. So socializing some of these things in our ongoing partnership, we're at one, over 1 1.5 million that we've donated to Dig Deep to bring piped water to people. Because again, if people aren't aware of it, there's not a collective action to address these shared challenges. So whatever we can do to really use our platform, our brands to talk about that, the aluminum bottle you were showing earlier, we partnered with 1% for the planet to basically have water benefit give back. So every time you buy the product, 1% of revenue goes to a water benefit organization. And just socializing that, making water forefront of mind, because it's forefront of our mind all the time, we understand it's not for other people. So just bringing it to people's attention really brings home like, what you can do in your backyard, to what type of stuff you're putting on your lawn, putting things in the right trash bins if it's like paints or whatnot, so you're not disposing of so contaminated water shit, but really bringing it to individuals to understand we're all connected. Our watersheds supply all the same water that we're all drinking, whether it's coming out of your faucet or our products. We have a shared interest to really come together, make sure people have access to water, and then also sustain the systems that are there, the ecosystems and the man-made water pipe water systems. You're speaking my language, I'm getting goose pimples. Because you have the right, I, I know about the people that don't have clean water, I know people that don't have access, I know exactly about who, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Because I've been in it, and if you're not really in it, you you know you think everything's a, a luxury in life, you don't even it, know about it, it, and and it's not. On the worldwide scope, on the World Water Day, we're talking about a billion. Yes. So uh, the, can't get a drink, and that is why we're so possessed with it. Because a young little kid cannot get some water, and they'll pass. And so this is a serious subject. You guys are taking it seriously. You're helping educate those. And hopefully our country, which is a privileged country, if you ask me, uh, as compared to somebody in the small town in Africa can't get a glass of water, is carrying 30, 40-pound uh, jugs of water uh, with water.org. And, it, you know, miles and miles away. Um, you're right on top of it. Thank you so much. What is the website? Uh, BlueTritonBrands.com, and if you want to go to our sustainability slips page, backslash sustainability. Okay, thank you, Ed. Thank you, Paul. Blue Triton, taste the spring water difference featuring Martin Reese, water advocate, beverage consultant, and water salamier. Water salamier. I can hardly say that when I'm talking in, uh, in wine. So, hey, right. Martin, how you doing? Very well, very well. It's nice to be here with you on Facebook Live. All righty. So tell me, uh, tell me, tell me, tell me, what is this water uh, difference? There's one thing here. And then tell me a little bit about water. So let's be honest. Water is our most important beverage in our lives. Without water, we wouldn't be on this planet. And by wine, we're always talking about terra. We know that a Riesling from Germany tastes totally different than a Riesling from Washington State. Why? It's all about the terra. So water, due to the water oh. cycle, one it's second. This is what I do. I, I'm the kind of a host that says, Terra. So, uh, Terra, what is Terra? Because not everybody knows what Terra is. So, Terra means uh, it's a French term that the wine people know where the wine grapes are actually growing. So, you can showcase the region of the planet in the wine. That's the reason in France the wine's a little bit more earthier versus in California the wine's a little bit more fruit forward. Another question. So is Terra, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. if you don't Please. mind, okay? Now, is Terra something they call Earth? Yes. Okay. So, so if the Earth is different in uh, in the Bordeaux region and it is different in LA from where right. you are, and they're different in my backyard here in Manhattan, 
uh, than the uh, the uh, the water. If I took a little bit of water out of that area in an aquifer, mm -hmm. all right, you're going to get into all that. You're smarter than I. Uh, then it might taste differently. Absolutely. Okay. Because water is a universal solvent, it leaks out minerality when it's rainwater and passes through all the different stone layers around the world and then leaks out minerality and then you can drink actually this mineral water now enriched with electrolytes and minerals and it will taste differently. And you what, can do you mean this. What's, what do you mean minerals? What do you mean minerals? What do you what do you mean minerals? It's dirt. It's dirt. It's what do you mean minerals? Dirt. It's not in, dirt. In beautiful stone layers, they have magnesium dissolved, oh. or calcium, or oh. sodium, oh. or potassium, oh. or silica, all this amazing minerals oh. that your body actually wants and needs. That's the reason you are Wait hungry. Wait a second. I eating. thought I'd take those in, ca in capsule form. Correct. Maybe back in the days, 400 years ago, we didn't have the little capsule forms. We had amazing spring waters around the world, and people went to spa and bath towns to drink the healing powers of these waters. Somehow lost in translation in America, we thought we need to purify now all the water to make it of zero TDS, like no more mineralities in the water. And then you have to go to a GNC and buy your little supplements. Actually, you don't have to do that. Drink real good water from a spring source, where there's already the, all this amazing minerals dissolved. Now, I have had, actually, uh, here, we're here at Blue Triton, I've had almost all their waters. And right. I've been lived and been around all these locations and I grew up on spring water uh -huh. in my little old tarry town up in Westchester mm -hmm. County, New York. I love this. So, um, so they have uh, organized themselves to be able to share the good water from all these Correct. locations, right? Yeah. Especially the original Poland Spring was, yeah. a, I guess, was the father of them all. And it's really interesting to see when you see the map there in the background a little bit, you see that, for example, Poland Spring comes from the East Coast. So yeah, let's walk over there just a little. Right? Poland Spring. We're doing a picture right now. And that's a beautiful picture. Look at this. We have uh, uh, a gorgeous thing. All right, so let's, let's, what's going on here? You see here the map, and you see here, for example, Poland Spring, where the spring source are located. And this region is where actually then Poland Spring is sold. The same with Deer Park, South Brazilia down in Florida, Osaka and Texas, Arrowheads here on the west coast, and Ice Mountain in the upper west. So they don't want to ship the water from A to B. They have regional brands and they're just staying there where the water is actually sourced. And I love that because they all taste differently, but they're all coming from different nature occurring sources. And here at the Blue Triton stand, we're doing a little water tasting for every hour and we can taste the difference between pool and spring and for example an arrowhead. Okay, so you're, why, why are you in water? Why, why, what are uh, you, because you took a shower one day? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and then the wisdom came and with the shower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it started when I was four or five years old, on vacation time with my parents in Germany. I was fascinated about the different taste profiles of tap water in Europe. And my parents thought, what's wrong with our son? Why is he not drinking the water what we have in the car? Because I thought that was boring, but I already knew the taste <laughs> of that particular brand. So I always wanted to discover new waters. And then in 2005, I worked in a Michelin star restaurant and my background in the hospitality industry. And a guest came to me and said, Martin, you have over a thousand different wines, but you're just serving one brand of water. And he didn't like the taste of that particular brand. And he asked me, what else do you have? So I created a water menu because I wanted to give options a water menu. to my clients in the restaurant. And from there, the snowball effect happened I became a little bit more famous in Germany in the media. I came to America in 2011 based on an O1 visa for extraordinary abilities for my knowledge of water. And now I'm sitting in Los Angeles. I drink water with many, many, many uh, TV shows now. What's now, fun? you know what, what's very interesting? Because I know a lot about Poland Spring. In fact, I know the grandson of uh, the gentleman who started Poland Spring. Oh, amazing. Okay, so I know a lot of history, Rondo. So, uh, uh, but keeping plastic out. So I, I've seen and I noticed how Poland Spring and uh, and many of the others really are taking this recycling very, 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 very Correct. seriously. And so how does that all happen? So it's not just about recycling. I think for me as a water sommelier, it's even more interesting because I've been, for example, to Maine and I've been to the White Cedar Spring source where they're sourcing one of their beautiful waters. And it's amazing for me to see that they have um, a water steward employed on each spring source and they're really measuring all the wetlands to make sure they do not have a negative impact on mother nature because let's be honest they're in a spring water business this spring water is for them the most important substance because they're selling that 
So without that and all, without their amazing spring source, their business model would be over. So therefore, they're protecting all the lands, all the spring sources surrounding to make sure they're really doing the right thing to help Mother Nature to provide a great water from America to Americans. What I think is great. Right, if I'm you want to talk you. about recycling, you need to talk with Blue Triton because I'm not a Blue Triton employee. I talk <laughs> about water. I'm okay. not talking about the recycling efforts of Blue Triton. Right, I'm going to ask you one last question, okay? Please. Just because I see you're a man of the world and a man that uh, has a lot of... Uh, belief in humanity, yes, uh, I sense, too. very, very, very important. So we do the International Day of Peace concerts mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, in Times Square, we did it in the Central Park and around the world. 193 countries agreed to it, it's our 22nd annual. And we also included uh, Mother Earth and uh, Climate Week and so on and so forth. So I've asked thousands of people, what does peace mean to them? Michael, what does peace mean to you? I'm going to ask you that, peace if you don't mind. Peace means for me when everybody would have access to clean and safe drinking water. Because water is a human right, obviously it's based on water and I think we can just achieve peace for me in my brain when everybody would have been able to get from this planet what everybody's supposed to be getting. And that is clean and safe drinking water for all of us. Michael, good man. Do you have a website that people can follow yes, you? Yes, martin-reza.com. Spell, spell that, spell that, spell it. Spell it, spell it. So M-A-R-T-I-N dash and then Reza, R-I-E-S-E dot com. My name, Martin Riese, or Google Water Sommelier, and you will find me right away. <laughs> you got great energy, great energy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, okay. everybody.